Hey folks, I, I know it's been a little while since I uploaded, and I apologize. Um, sometimes life just gets in the way. Uh, sometimes you do something dumb and you upload something that you shouldn't have, and then you end up taking it down. Uh, but anyway, I just want to, uh, just gonna do a simple video tonight. Um, while I'm working on this, I guess I'll, I'll talk about some, some things I've learned recently, and, uh, I don't know, I'll just should be a nice relaxing video, I think. Uh, but anyway, I bought this Game Boy Advance SP motherboard on Taobao. Now, what's special about this motherboard, and by the way, this is an AGS-101 motherboard, not a 001. You can tell it's a 101 because it has model number AGT on it instead of AGS. Uh, if you look at the back, there's no big old transformer here either, and again, AGT, and you can tell this is an IQ model because of this white cart slot. Uh, now, for the most part, there isn't really a big difference between the regular models and the IQ models, uh, except that um, the IQ models are unique to China and apparently are the only ones that come with these white cart slots. Now, I have already taken a look at this thing and it does seem to work mostly. I am now just noticing all this, for lack of better terminology, black crap <laughs> around the uh, crystal, but it does still seem to work for the most part, so I don't think it's really an issue. We'll, we'll try cleaning that up, but we'll get to that later. Um, but the biggest problems with this thing are that the cart slot is kind of hit and miss. Now, the seller who was selling this did mention that the um, display connector seems to be hit and miss, but I saw in the pictures that it looked super clean. There didn't appear to be any issues with that, so I was just banking on it either being their display or, you know, then maybe I'll get an interesting video. We could try replacing that, but lo and behold, I ended up testing this out already, and the uh, display connector is fine. That's not an issue. So I think maybe they were mentioning that there are issues with the cart slot. Um, Google Translate is nice, but it's not 100% there. Uh, but otherwise, everything else seems good. So we'll, I guess we'll just build this up. I'll, I'll build myself a nice AGS uh, 101. Uh, but oh yeah, just for, just for comparison, this is a 001 board. They have AGS 101 AGT. And then there's that big transformer that I was mentioning that the 101 boards don't have. Ta-da! Okay. Anyway, back to this. I did also buy a couple IQ shells so that this thing would be nice and complete. Um, I bought two because it was a lot of two and it was five bucks. I couldn't help myself but they both come with IQ emblems and uh, IQ stickers on the bottom here. And I don't know, I just think it's kind of neat. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize this because it didn't really mention it in the listing and I didn't notice it missing from the picture because I didn't think to look for it, but neither of these shells came with battery covers, hinge covers, or um, the little screw hole covers. So I'm going to end up using one of my perfectly normal uh, 101, Japanese 101, or 001s, excuse me, as a donor for parts, especially because this one has a big old burn mark in it. I don't know what the heck they did to it, but here we go. The original plan was to just buy these shells and pull the stickers and emblems off them, and for this one, that's probably what I'm going to do, because it's really beat up, uh, but... Um, yeah, like I said, the original plan was just to pull the sticker and emblem, and then I was just going to reshell it in another shell, but I decided, eh, it's kind of weird to do for a, um, a 101 to stick it in a 001 shell, so then I ended up, you know, thinking, I'll, I'll, I'll just stick with this shell, but then the missing pieces got me thinking, well, if I mix it up this way, I'll still have... A mostly original shell that I think looks pretty cool and then I could put the, the platinum battery cover from this one on here and you know kind of matching aesthetic um, oh they, they did come with the hinge covers 
but I have it all separated because they were freaking filthy and I had to give these things a bath. But I'm thinking that'll that'll work pretty nicely. Oh, I suppose we'd want the silver hinge cover. That way it matches better when it's open and when it's closed. But anyway, I guess let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm not going to be IPS modding this, even though I was testing it with my fake 101 screen. Um, I do have an actual 101 screen that I can use for this. This is from a project that I was working on a very long time ago and haven't touched since. Um, you can probably tell what's going on here just from looking at, looking at this. Um, it needs a lot of work. I've learned quite a bit since then, and anyway, there's a better way to fix it. But in this box, we have a slightly abused, but still perfectly working, original 101 screen. And the rest of that screen. So I think that's all we need here. Yeah, it's just some SP parts, and hate me if you want, but it was broken when I started. It's still broken now, but I can fix it. When I started this mod, I picked a 101 to do it with because the 101 screens are a little bit thinner than 001 screens, and at the time, there were no IPS mods. And those are by far the thinnest screens now, so when I come back to that, pro if I come back to that project, we'll just use an IPS screen for that. It'll be, it'll make my life so much easier. And, uh, and I, I think I'll end up pissing fewer people off. But as I've learned lately, that's pretty much unavoidable no matter what you do. And this is an original lens. I think it's gonna look like garbage though. You know what, let's, let's put a glass lens on this. Why not, right? I mean, we have it open. This lens is not in the best condition, especially because I just let it roll around in that box, but. Stick this metal frame back on here. And before even continuing, uh oh. That stuck down there pretty good. There we go. Before even continuing, let's make sure I didn't totally ruin this thing at some point. I'm going to stick this in the bottom shell here with a battery and there's my can. And we'll just double check that everything is still working and happy. That's interesting. So I'm 90% sure this screen works just fine. Oh, there it goes. Maybe the Game Boy just was frozen or something. That was weird. Let's try that again. Hmm, now it's fine. So yeah, screen's fine. Game Boy's fine. Now, here's... Here's the issue I've noticed with this console, all right? And I genuinely don't know if this is just some weird IQ quirk or if this is a problem with this console. But in this Game Boy here, I have a Japanese copy of Pokemon Emerald that, as we can all see, works perfectly fine. It's booting up, so on and so forth. But if we try it in this one, I couldn't get it to boot. 
Oh, now it won't even, oh, battery fell out, I think, yeah. See, it just gives me that scrambled text thing, like it's not, uh, like the cartridge isn't seated properly. So I don't know if like the cart reader is just uh, really dirty and it's not reading some carts properly, or if there's just some weird lockout for IQ models and uh, Japanese games. Um, if anyone knows more information, I'd hit me up in the comments. I, I'd love to know why that is. But anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. We're gonna, I'm gonna work top down on this thing. Um, actually, no, hang on. I'm going to pause because I need to go get a lens. I'll be right back. All right, and because I have a problem, I have plenty of lenses to choose from. And I'm pretty sure these are all SP lenses. So I think this half are all just stock plastic lenses. Uh, these are all aftermarket. These look... OEM, salvaged, and then some more aftermarket ones. I'll put my salvaged OEM one there. I suppose I could use another OEM one, just stick it on there. These are all in pretty rough shape except for this one. This one even has a matte film applied to it. That would be pretty cool. I'm going to use a glass one, though. I already have the darn thing open. All right, so I have some adhesive that is not pre-cut, and then a whole ton of glass lenses, stock style and then Famicom style. And a Retro Game Repair Shop it just sent me a bunch of lenses that I want to check out. Not, not this one. That's just been sitting on my desk. But I think these are all, oh yeah, none of these are SP, but cool lenses nonetheless. But we'll, we'll get to those in another, at another time. Oh, look, I just found another aftermarket one. I'm literally tripping over these things. All right, so the question comes down to stock style or Famicom style. I'm thinking stock style because I don't think Famicom is going to look good in this silver. Actually, you know, I don't hate it. That's rough. Because I really like the gold lettering, but I, I don't, I'm not digging the red. Interestingly enough, this isn't even centered. You can see the bezel on the left on my OEM console is a lot bigger than the bezel on the right here. Or left. <laughs> I swear I know my left from my right. Interesting. Alright, so let's use an OEM style one then. Oh god, that one's messed up too. Oh, they're all messed up. Oh well. We'll use it anyway. It'll work. It'll be good. Just you watch. I should just throw out these aftermarket plastic ones. I'm never going to use most of them. Just hang on to like one or two. There's no reason to have this many. If you're replacing a lens, you know, why use why use a uh, plastic one when the glass ones are available and the printing on the glass ones is just as bad, but they're glass. All right, so we're going to use this. I am going to plug this in. Actually, I'm going to clean this first. I'm going to use my microfiber cloth again. I'm going to put a little bit of glass cleaner on it, just a little bit, and I'm 
using the off-brand stuff because it's a bottle I bought like 10 years ago and I still haven't run out of it. There is definitely better stuff to use though. I think I'm going to end up making this so much worse than it needs to be though. The problem is it's so hard to clean these things. And then once you've got it together, it's even more difficult because you've got to take it apart again, yada yada. So anyway, while I'm working on this, um, as some of you may know or may not know, there were only like 1,200 views, I think, on it. A few days ago, I had uploaded a video on building your own cart reader. Now... I don't want to get into, oh damn it, I just put my thumb on it. I don't want to get into the specifics of why I uploaded that video, but long story short, I shouldn't have uploaded that video. It was uh, in poor judgment. Um, basically, it comes down to two wrongs do not make a right. That's not how the world works. That's not how the world has ever worked. And, uh, unfortunately, I may have done some irreparable damage to a, uh, to a business that is very popular in the community and very, uh, very good for the community. And in the process, I may have also lost someone I could have considered a friend, um, as much as you can with someone online that you don't really ever meet up with in person. And yeah, that was a, that was a mistake. I have a platform and I want to use it to help people, not hurt people. And so that was a lapse of judgment in my part. And if you don't already know, this is about Ben Ben. I still don't agree with how he runs his business, and that's fine. I don't have to support him, but I also don't have to actively sabotage him, and that was wrong of me. Oh, man, I ended up making this so much worse than I needed to. And I feel, you know, I'm going to peel this foam off, maybe. No, I'm just going to pull this whole front frame off again. Anyway, yeah, I, I have a platform and I don't know, I wasn't really thinking about myself and my position, but I have a following now. People who watch my videos take what I, who take what I say and take it to heart and that's fine. I, I pride myself on helping people and providing good information, but that video was not good for the community. And so I have taken it down. If you're one of the few people who just archives everything because you're afraid of someone taking it down, well, afraid of specific situations like this, respectfully I ask that you do not share that video. I'm not gonna tell you to get rid of it because you wouldn't listen to me if I did. But please don't share it. Keep it for your archives. Now, eventually, see, look, I'm getting all these streaks, man. This is just, this is not an easy task. I respect the hell out of people who can get these things clean. But anyway, I, I'm not going to say I'm never putting that video back up because, quite frankly, there might come a time when... I find it appropriate to post that video, but it is not anytime soon. It is going to be a very long time from now. And one of the prerequis prerequisites for me to post that video is basically when it no longer affects anyone's business. Now, I posted that video. I said I wasn't going to get into it, and I'm getting into it now. Uh, I posted that video because I thought it was neat as hell. 
I was showing off something that I thought was really cool. Um, but the reaction to that video was a few members of the community had uh, taken the information presented in that video and created their own hardware and um, rubbed it in Ben Ven's face. And that was not okay with me. That did not that did not sit well. We are we are one community and we do not need to shit fling. I think maybe I need new cloths because there's every there's a certain spot on this cloth that keeps causing marks. You can see those circles. I can rub them back out. Keep hitting that one area. I think I should have just quit while I was ahead. At this point, probably five, ten minutes ago. <laughs> Where's that wet spot? There it is. Oh, this is so terrible. Holy crap. I think I might have to pause here while I just literally sit and buff this. I'm going to go get a new cloth. And I'll be back when this is clean. And that only took a few seconds with a brand new cloth. Should have started with that. Um, all right. So I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape on this, and then just peel it off. And this is going to leave marks, what the fuck? Oh no. I'm just not having a good day. All right, I'll just have to be, I'll just have to remove any lint and dust with compressed air. Okay. So anyway, one more, one more thing on the uh, subject that I was discussing while working on this. Um, like I said, we are one community and I believe we should be respectful of each other and help each other out whenever possible. And I'm going to extend that and say we should call out, we need to be sure to call out members of this community when they are um, and they're being discourteous or maybe causing harm in some way. Um, they're actively sabotaging someone. Oh man, I shouldn't have peeled that off. I could have saved that. They're actively causing harm. You know, they're sabotaging someone's business, whether intentionally or unintentionally, uh, spreading misinformation. Now, I'm not saying we need to attack people. That's even worse. But, you know, maybe, maybe take a second to say, hey, you should think about what you're doing here. And uh, that's, that's what someone did for me. And I think, I think that was a very smart move on their part. Okay, so we're going to line this up and hopefully not totally screw it up. That'll go like that. That'll go in there. And then the back will go on. And that'll close up and all will be well. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to set this aside for now, because now I need to take apart this thing. Uh, so I need screwdrivers. Where are my screwdrivers? Here they are. That's the wrong screwdriver. be the right screwdriver, but I have a different screw in here. The 
this is the SP that I was testing. I was trying to find replacement screws for the battery cover and I found some screws that almost quite fit right and I ended up just filing down the head because it was way too thick and then it was too long so I filed down the shank as well. It works but it's less than ideal. Anyway. That's the wrong one. A little bit off my game. Anyway, we all fuck, fuck up time to time. It happens. It's, uh, it sucks, but unfortunately not a whole lot we can do about it. You know, once, once the damage is done, it's done. So I think, I'm not saying it's, you know, no big deal when someone fucks up, but I think... It's important that we learn from our mistakes. And so going forward, I'm going to stick to stuff that I know and try not to fuck with other people's livelihoods, intentionally or otherwise. And should I mess up again, which I sincerely hope never happens, but I am a person, and people are dumb. Believe me, I work with them. <laughs> anyway, okay. I think I think that's enough about that. I think I've said all I can say. I think dwelling on it any longer is just going to be detrimental. So I did just do a video on um, hinges for the Game Boy Advance SP, and I highly recommend you check it out, even though I'm probably going to upload this video first. But, you know, there's some good stuff in there. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll upload them simultaneously to try and make up for my, uh, for my slow uploads. I typically try and get a video going every three days or so. And right now I'm at eight days. And by the time I get this video uploaded, get the description and title all filled out, get the thumbnail going, get it edited, not necessarily in that order, it's probably gonna be even more. Do not have the fastest internet. Now I've talked about this before, but in the off chance you haven't seen that video, removing these hinge covers is probably the hardest part about reshelling an SP, assuming you're um, trying to reuse these parts. You can use a metal tool to get these out. I do not recommend it in the slightest. It is very easy to damage either the rubber cover itself or the plastic surrounding it. Uh, these little plastic tools are really good. You can kind of slide them around on the outside until you can get between the rubber and the plastic and then just keep sliding it around until you can get under it. And then eventually you can just pick it off like that. Kind of expected that conversation that I needed to have to take longer, or at least I expected to work quicker. So sorry, I'm probably going to be quiet for the rest of this video. I'm still upset with the situation and how things turned out. Upset with my judgment, um, but I suppose I can talk about these hinges now. Again, I did just do a video on this 
but getting these out, I highly recommend uh, this little 3D printable tool that I made. Uh, if you do not have a 3D printer yourself, um, it's not worth it. Don't try and buy these. Don't have someone print them and send them to you. Just the fees alone are going to be more than they're worth. This is like five cents worth of plastic if you own a printer, less even. Um, but the reason you want to use one of these is because it'll push these clip, it'll release these clips without damaging them. If you sit here with a screwdriver and try and push them in, uh, you are going to break them and then your hinges are not going to feel as good as they could. Uh, so I just, I recommend using the tool that'll release them. Uh, if you do not have a 3D printer, if you don't have a buddy with a 3D printer, you don't have a makerspace with a 3D printer, or you're watching this while there's still a global pandemic going on and you don't want to go to your makerspace, which I totally get, don't blame you for that one. Um, there is a method you can employ that uses a, uh, BIC, a cheap BIC pen, uh, but once you have those released, you can just pop them out with a screwdriver or something. And that's it, we'll set this aside. I don't care for this part. I want this one. And I need to release that from the motherboard. Excuse me while I'm working off screen. Peel off plastic. Oh, that is terrible. That's probably all on the inside, isn't it? Oh, it is. Oh, that's so awful. This is not going well for me, is it? Oh, there's an easier way. There's an easier way. Hang on. We don't have to remove the lens. We can just remove the front frame again for a third time. Just release these plastic clips. All right, why isn't it coming out? There we go. I will have to clean that yet again. We can go behind here. Try and get that awful, yes. You should always take the time to make sure your lens is extra clean because otherwise you'll put it back together and you'll hate yourself the whole time and you'll never fix it because it's just so much effort and then you'll never use it because it's all you see when you use it. And it's just a repeating cycle, a self-serving cycle. All right, I need tweezers now. To pick out some of these fibers from my cloth I got stuck in the adhesive. really stuck in so I'm just gonna push it into the adhesive a little bit more all right I think that's good that is significantly better looking at it let's uh, you know, the front that is much better still Problem is near these edges. I'm having a hard time cleaning. Let's try again. Bought a new 3D printer. That's exciting. Got tired of fighting with my current one. So I can finally start printing, uh, printing screen brackets and stuff.
That's on this side. But I can't tell. Gonna get a little bit of isopropyl. Cause there's this weird spot right where my thumb is, but you probably can't see because oh there it is. If I hold it at an angle. Oh, that was definitely on the front. I did not have to do that. Okay. Hi kitty cat. All right, and then I just gotta get this corner. I'm gonna stick my spudger in the cloth so I can get into that corner nicely. There's like this weird texture on the inside of this uh, lens. Like it was wet or something. Uh, and it wasn't allowed to evaporate, or it did evaporate, and it just left streaks, and it just looked real bad. All right, that spot is still there. I'm thinking that might be a defect in the lens, and I don't know that there's much I can do about that. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna... Oh. This is why you need to hold your uh, spray completely upright. I just got that all over the inside of my lens. So, sorry this video turned into um, Mako cleaning a screen for 20 minutes. But I swear, in the end, it's going to be good. What? Oh my goodness. I think we're good now. I think we're good. They make these um, stickers that I was trying to do with my tape here. You can stick down peel up and they're supposed to not leave a residue. Yeah, that's the right one. I'll go in there. This will go on here. But we need to remove where's my spudger? Here it is. There's a little hole here. You can poke something in. Remove this emblem. You have to be careful though. If you use a metal tool, like for example a SIM card removal tool, which does fit, uh, you might leave a mark on the emblem. I'm going to set that on my desk. Just press down like that. And I can slide my blade in there to get a grip on the edge. And there we go. I can save that for another shell. A nice OEM Nintendo emblem. And where is... It's right here. Just gonna do the same exact thing. Because I want the one that says IQ from IQ console. And unfortunately, all of the adhesive stayed with the shell. Which means if I stick this in there, it is not gonna stay. Oh, never mind, yeah it is. I have a feeling it's just gonna fall out though, and I don't wanna lose it. Yeah. All right, so we are going to uh, we're going to get some new adhesive. I'm going to try and 
get the rest of that off there. And we will use this 3M 300 LSE stuff. I think we can just get away with, oh uh, no, I'm gonna have to use like one and a half. Oh, you know what? Stick this to that for sizing reference. That way I get it as close to the right size as possible. stuff is ridiculously sticky. And I think I screwed that up. That's okay. I did screw it up, of course. Okay, easy enough to trim. I was just trying to not waste it. All right. Gonna cut off another piece. And this one I'm going to cut off an even smaller piece of it. And stick this on here. And it's too big, so I'm going to put it on sideways. Or it's slightly less big. Okay. All right. Getting there. This is the good stuff. So, this emblem is never coming off once I stick it in there. This is the stuff they use. Well, I say it's never coming off, but it can come off. It's likely never coming off, at least not without damaging something. There we go. Spin that. And there we go. I guess I can screw this together. I don't see any reason why not. Probably have to take it apart again, but... So next question, should I use the platinum, come on, here we go. Should I use the platinum screw covers or should I use black screw covers? Because I have those too. And I don't mean graphite, I mean onyx because I have an onyx shell that I took apart and I saved the screw covers from. Did I seriously just do that? I think I lost one of the screws already. So that is, oh no, that's it. Uh oh, or is that it? I think that's it. There we go. I'll worry about that later. This needs to go into this shell. And I was thinking I would use the platinum hinge covers. So 
Just like I discussed in my other video, there is a left hinge and a right hinge. The one with the black clips is the left hinge. The one with the white clips is the right hinge. Pop these in here. You just need to line up the keys on the top and bottom of the hinge with the front and back of the shell. And it just pops right in. And the shell does have to be open for those to slide in, but Bob Jonti. All right. Needed my light pipe as well. I suppose we should put this in there. And I was thinking I'd use this hinge cover. And I don't know, I just thought this color combination looked pretty cool. And someone brought up that it looks like a uh, NES uh, Game Boy Advance SP. And, you know, kind of agree, but I don't dislike it. Whereas I don't really like the NES Game Boy Advance SPs. Anyway, next question. What kind of buttons do I want to use? I don't have the original buttons that came with the shell aside from shoulder buttons. I do have the original buttons that came with the Platinum shell, IQ shell, but I also have the same buttons from the Platinum donor I just took apart. Um, but I also have a whole host of aftermarket buttons. Put my tape away. Including these new ones here, these translucent greens. Which, eh, it's all right. I'm not thinking. I'm thinking no, though. I have these transparent pink ones, which, by the way, do appear to match the new pink shells they're making, but. The pink shells come with white buttons instead of the pink buttons, so I don't know what's up with that, but this is a shell for another video, yet again. Okay. I don't hate that either. In fact, I like that a lot better than the green, but I'm still not sure that's what I want for this console. Huh, I'll just dump this out. with those. I have full button sets in here. Uh, I was also thinking about these blue ones and that I'm actually kind of digging. It almost kind of looks like the um, that like Game Boy Advance Space World prototype. But this is an SP and in hindsight these buttons don't fit worth a damn. Sometimes there's some pretty serious flashing on them that needs to be removed. Oh, that fits so much better now. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. Um, I'm going to pass for now, but that's an option in the future. Another option is white. No. Nah. And then otherwise, I just have some aftermarket black buttons, which I think would be best. Maybe not these particular ones. Because I have an endless supply of SP parts, it seems. Out of the way. So I can dump this out. 
I'm not really sure what this bag is. I think it's mostly OEM parts, broken or otherwise. There's a uh, volume slider. A power switch, definitely gonna use that. See, this looks aftermarket, but it also looks used, which means it's probably something that I have used before. And if that's the case, with how used it is, it was probably fine. You know, sometimes the aftermarket buttons, they just feel like garbage. I don't think, I think this is one of the good ones. Um, but you can tell that or it's severe, a very heavily used OEM one. But you can see on the OEM buttons, there's this like, there's a circle that's like perfectly defined in the middle. Whereas on the aftermarket one, it's kind of fuzzy. For example, here's that platinum one. You can see that circle's perfectly defined in there. And then if we go back into my aftermarket bin here, this one, oh, that one's actually pretty good. It's a new mold though. Let's look at one of the older molds. On this white one, you can see it's pretty, uh, you can't because this one's not reflecting light the way they uh, normally do. Or the other colors do. See, yeah, there we go. Let's take a look at that. Both aftermarket, I think, but completely different molds. I like this one a lot better. That'll go in there. Yeah, let's, let's just use these. I'm fairly certain these are aftermarket. I'm actually not 100% sure. I also don't know why there's two brightness buttons. But we'll just, we'll just roll with it. What are we missing? We're missing B. There it is. Ooh, there's all my extra SP screws. That's nice. I was looking for those. Pop our OEM speaker in there. I'm going to use the membranes out of that SP I just took apart. And I'll put that SP back together again someday. I'll probably use the motherboard for a uh, another IPS mod or something, I don't know. The uh, one chip backlight manufacturer, or OC as it's, as I, as I commonly abbreviate it, um, they just switched to a new LCD manufacturer for their IPS kits, so maybe I'll mod that other SP so we can put the two side by side and see how they compare. Funny Playing is still using LG manufactured LCDs, whereas the one chip IPS kits are using, uh, I believe that it's Topoly branded, T O P P O L Y, I think. Something like that. All right. We're getting there. We're almost done. I skipped a step. The power switch on this thing needs to be cleaned. I forgot about that. Let's do that right now. And while that's heating up, pop this stuff back in the baggies. In my baggie. Well, plastics at least. I'm going to put the screws where I expect them to be. Oh, there's perfectly good shoulder buttons too. I'll have to go through this sometime. But for now I need it out of my way. I don't know why there's four Nintendo emblems. They look pretty good but they're aftermarket. Alright, so 
So cleaning the power switch, I've done videos on this too, but easiest way, or at least what I like to do, uh, I'm gonna switch it off. Doesn't really matter. Just put the switch away from where I'm sticking my razor blade in. And the razor blade is just a tool to help me lift the uh, shielding here. I'm going to desolder shielding and try lifting it simultaneously. It's difficult because it's latched on and soldered on. There we go. Adding solder can definitely help. But once you got the first side off, the other side is easy enough to get off with tweezers. This is the wrong tip on my iron for this, but we're getting there. Oop. Got it by accident, but I got it. All right. So this one is, uh, I think, great. Not terrible, but not great. You can see right to the left of the spudger, that dark black area, and then right to the right of the spudger, that dark black area, that's supposed to be copper, or gold colored, I guess. But it's covered in this carbon buildup. And the easiest way to clean it is with a cotton bud or Q-tip or cotton swab or whatever you, whatever you call it from whatever country you're in. I like to cut them in half and I like to use the ones with the cardboard tube instead of like wood or plastic because these cardboard tubes are the perfect size to stick in there for cleaning. But first I'm going to just wet the end of it with isopropyl and it's a little bit dirty for my flush cutters but let me just Slide that around. Apologies for the noise. That's how you know it's working when it makes a terrible noise, but you can see how dirty that is now. So, I'm just going to clip the end off, rinse, repeat until we're all clean. Not perfect, but it is significantly better. Look at how much bigger that contact appears now. Uh, on particularly stubborn power switches, I have used um, a little bit of baking soda. If you put just a hint of baking soda in there, it'll act as a very mild abrasive. And I don't recommend doing it because it is an abrasive. And abrasives are not your first choice when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's more of a last resort. But that will clean the contacts up nicely. I think for power switches though, especially you just need just need to put in the work. A little bit of elbow grease and you'll get it clean. Alright. Next we'll use the other side cotton swab, the actual cotton part. I'm just going to saturate it in isopropyl. My container is almost empty and I'm trying to conserve this stuff because it's really hard to get right now. But, uh, let's bring that in so you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to hold this down with my tweezers and then try and clean off the wipers. doesn't have to be perfect and you really don't have to spend a lot of time on it because only the very tips of these things actually touch. 
contacts. And once that's cleaned off, I like to, again, hold it down by the little metal, metal piece in here, otherwise it'll pop out. I like to bend these up just a little bit. Both sides. Okay. Not much, just a little bit. The more you bend it up, the, uh, I mean, you could, you risk fatiguing the material, and if it breaks, you're kind of SOL, but the more you bend it up, the harder it'll be to get back together. Next, we need to solder this back down. And if you want to add solder, it's perfectly fine, but there should be plenty of solder already on there for you. I highly recommend doing this with the SP outside of the case, by the way, just in case you accidentally hit your soldering iron on the casing. Um, it would absolutely ruin my day if I did that right now. And now that I've said it, it's probably going to happen. But do as I say, not as I do. Something like that. Okay. When soldering that back down, you need to take extra special care to make sure that the shielding is completely flush again like you see here. If there are any gaps, you see, you know, if it's not perfectly latched on, and by the way, the latches will hold it. You don't even need to solder it down, but solder's there, you should use it. Um, if there's any gaps, it's gonna work even worse than it did before. All right, before we put the bottom on, let's talk about the cart reader. Now, I can tell this one needs a cleaning just because I'm looking at it and it's freaking filthy. And uh, there are two ways you can clean this. The first way, the easiest way, is to take like a credit card or a gift card or something, something plastic, not paper. You want something with this amount of thickness. thickness. And uh, you know, it's not gonna ruin your card, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you could use driver's license or your credit card, just don't use either on a video that you're filming to put on the internet. And then, you know, wrap it in a cloth. Uh, an old cotton t-shirt I find works best, but this will work too. Uh, so I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth. And just get this, you know, saturate the end of this with some isopropyl alcohol and you don't even have to take it apart while it's together, you just stick it in like that. Um, this microfiber cloth is a little bit thick. It doesn't quite fit well, uh, and I don't wanna force it. So, like I said, old t-shirt works best, but this'll work fine too. This is not something you should be doing regularly. This is only something you should do uh, if your console's acting up or if it's like visibly dirty and just insert and remove. No, don't do any of this side to side action. Um, it's not fully inserted, so don't worry. Uh, but just insert, remove, and you know, do that a few times and you're done. However, if you have a console apart, which I do, there is an easier and more effective way that involves an old toothbrush. And I use this for cleaning um, consoles, not teeth. That's why it's so gross and disgusting looking. But Put some isopropyl alcohol on it. And then you can just go to town like this. And if you're using a soft bristled toothbrush or a soft bristled nylon plastic brush, you don't have to worry about being too, too rough on it. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you should 
go completely ham on it, but, you know. You're not very likely to ruin it this way. Word of warning though, on other models, uh, other region consoles, there is a, uh, this serial number here, that will rub off with isopropyl alcohol. So you can put a little bit of tape or something over that to prevent that from happening. This one has a sticker. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, you know, just do it with the toothbrush. And yes, we are doing side to side. It's not the best, but it should not damage these pins as long as you're not overly rough with it. And this last pin here on the right, all the way over pin 32, that is supposed to stick out further than the rest of the pins. Um, that is a ground pin. It is designed to stick out further so that when you plug a cart in, it is physically the first pin that connects. That is the ground pin. That is normal. But this will hopefully fix our reading issues. And I should have checked this out earlier because I don't know what this, what that's about. I think it's like ink or something because it's coming off. It's making my toothbrush black. By the way, a, a brand new toothbrush actually works better than an old used toothbrush. But, you know, work with what you got. It's not necessarily worth going out and buying a toothbrush if you, uh, you know, just for cleaning, if you already have one laying around. If you go to the dentist and get regular cleanings like a normal human being, a responsible adult. Um, I don't know, my dentist gives me toothbrushes. He's one of those. So yeah, I have no idea what's up with that black stuff. Most of it came off, but there's still quite a bit of stubborn stuff in the cracks there. I'm just gonna leave it and hope for the best. And I should... Oh, see, look, it got on my... Uh, Cart slot here. I'm going to take my dirty microfiber, a little bit more isopropyl, and clean this up. Yeah, I think that needs a little bit more hardcore cleaning, but I'm not quite prepared to give it right now. All right, let's see if this will boot my AGS Aging test ROM. And I need a buttery source. Set this to, come on. 4.08 volts, oh, you can't see that, sorry. And, Let's double check I have the right polarity before I even plug anything in. The bottom one is the positive. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to calibrate the screen because this is a new screen to this console. Original, these analog style screens are um, they're a little bit particular with variance, uh, tolerances, and so on. Oh, come on. My uh, L and R buttons don't both quite work. I might need to use my modified ROM. Yep. 
Or maybe I'll just have to swap those buttons. Ah, there we go. Just had to press harder. We want um, LCD unit check. Yeah, LCD unit checker. And that gives us a whole bunch of test patterns here. Bring the brightness up so you can see a little bit better. Uh, this actually looks surprisingly spot on. Um, I like this first test because you can tell if the screen is out of calibration, it'll flicker. I guess basically what you're seeing in the video, but not what I'm seeing in person. Um, and you can go through all these test patterns here. Uh, it's pretty good. But let me go back to that. And I'm going to twist the uh, trim pot on the bottom. So you see that's what an out of calibration screen looks like. See how it's flickering. I'll just twist it the other way. Yeah, as you can see, all that does is make it worse. So I think it was already pretty darn good calibrated. Now, the problem I'm seeing, and I just dropped my power switch. I'm gonna need that. Oh, there it is. The problem I'm seeing is that these bottom two colors look pretty much identical to me. This bottom one should be white and that one right above it should be light gray, but the, I don't see the contrast difference. I think that's, I don't think that's anything wrong with the screen. I think that's just a, uh, a testament to these screens in general. They're not very good. But it is what it is. Okay. Let's finish putting this back together so I can end this video and wish you guys good night. I don't know what I did with the bottom of the unit that I actually want to use. I don't know how I lost it. I mean, it's not like I went anywhere. My desk isn't that big. Did I put it on the floor? I'm gonna pause the video and find it. Don't worry, I found it. So this is gonna go on here, but first we need to do a couple things. I need to put in the shoulder buttons and I need to put the uh, square nut in here and the power switch, but I'll do that last. So the shoulder buttons, I'm going to use the hardware out of this shell with the original buttons that the shell came with. So this graphite shell did actually come with the shoulder buttons and I had to clean them because they were friggin' gross, but it's okay. These shoulder buttons, whoops, drop the hinge. Use these springs. You can see there's two sides to the spring. There's this bent side and this straight side. Uh, and the hinges are directional. So uh, one goes in the left, the other goes in the right. It won't fit if you try and put the wrong spring in the wrong um, button. You can see since the bent part goes onto the button, you can see it doesn't line up with the cutout on this one. Maybe if it focuses. Whereas on this button, it lines up with the cutout nicely. You can hold it in like that. Stick the post in. And then just stick it in the shell. And then from here, just bring that around, latch it under the catch, and that's it. And again, I am going to use the square nut from this shell. Oh God, where'd it go? Oh, there it is.
And the power switch, you're supposed to put that in the shell. And then I think we got everything. So keep the shell upright, flip the console over, and then drop it on the bottom. And should just click on. Nice. I'm going to put that game in there just to hold it together while I'm flipping it around. But let's go ahead and put these screws in you. Yeah? By the way, when you're threading screws into plastic uh, that have already been, you know, plastic that's already had screws, if you reverse turn it, you know, spin it around in reverse, you probably didn't hear that, but the screw did just click as the threads dropped into place and lined up. Uh, if you don't do that, otherwise you might start cutting new threads as you're screwing that in. And, um, you know, you can get away with that a few times, but eventually the shell's just going to strip out and you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. Um, how'd I lose the battery now? What the f*** over? Oh. It's still in the shell that I had it in. Alright goes in there and let's see if it boots my crystal. Hey! Now it boots my emerald, not crystal. I swear I know my games. Ta-da! So yeah, it wasn't some weird regional lockout. I didn't think it was because I was pretty sure there are no lockouts on any Game Boy game or any Game Boy consoles. Um all the buttons seem to be working. I know L and R are working because I was able to get into that menu on the uh, test cart. I have volume control. I have start. I have select. I'd say that's good enough. I'm pretty happy with that. Right, that's enough. This video isn't about Pokemon Emerald. This video is about an IQ AGS 101 that I was kind of, sort of, restoring. All right, so last step. I would love to use a, um, a graphite battery cover, but as it turns out, I just flat out don't have one. So I'm thinking I'll use the platinum one. That way, you know, it matches the uh, cover there. But I should probably put a battery in there. For now. I'm going to take the battery out when I put this thing into storage. But until then, I think I can, I think I can play with it. Oh, I, did, I never actually checked to see if charging works. Let's, let's find out. have a USB to AGS cable, or NDS. Red light means it's on. Orange light means it's charging. Well, there we go. That's easy enough. I still have no idea if the link port works or if the headphone out on the charge port works. I have no interest in testing the link port right now, and I can't test the charge port headphone out if I wanted to, because I don't have an adapter. Well, I do, somewhere, I think. Uh, but all that's left are those, and I think for now I'm just going to stick with the platinum screw covers.
because they're right in front of me and if I do this then I don't have to put them away but I can always swap them out later so there we go all in all I paid uh, probably 20 bucks for this thing maybe less but that's not counting the actual LCD which I already had the lens that I already had the donor SP shell and screws and battery cover and battery and stuff that I already had um, so I can't recommend building one this way from scratch unless you already have quite a few of the parts but if you do namely one of these screens here then uh knock yourself out and yeah the buttons feel fine i think that's because i'm using the uh, oem membranes and these aftermarket buttons that i picked they aren't terrible so yeah i think i'm gonna go play with my new to me console i'm I'm happy with this turned out. I'm, I'm very pleased. It feels really good. Um, I think I want to change out these eventually, the hinge covers. And I don't know. I'm not really digging this battery cover on here, but at least it is an IQ sticker with an IQ emblem on an actual IQ PCB made with all OEM parts except for the buttons and the lens. Yeah, and the screw. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, if you stuck with me this far, I know this is a super long video at uh, almost an hour and a half at this point, hour and 22 minutes. I'm gonna ramble for another couple minutes here. Um, if you stuck with me this far, thank you. Truly appreciate it. Um, nothing you haven't really seen before on my channel, but still cool to show off one of my new toys, especially because it's kind of unique, at least outside of China, it's kind of unique. Um, but yeah, thanks for sticking with me. Um, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos, all that stuff. It does help my channel grow, but it doesn't help me personally because... As you guys may or may not be aware, my channel is not monetized. There are no ads on my videos. Uh, I don't have any donation links. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have an OnlyFans. Um, you know, I don't. I don't have any of that because I just. I just do this for fun, man. This is. This is my hobby. I like sharing my hobby, and uh, you know, if it helps people out, that's even better. So, thank you guys for sticking with me, and even though I did do some unsavory things recently, but um, hoping we can move past that and get some great new videos going. I have, coming up pretty soon, I have the um, Funny Playing DMG IPS kit that hoping to get installed pretty soon here. Um, you can see it comes with PCB and everything nice uh, but I'm waiting to do this until I get my new Game Boy DMG shells in the mail so I don't have to reshell it in a couple days uh, today's Thursday I should be getting those Saturday well I guess today's Friday now that it's 1 a.m. Um, I should be getting these Saturday I also have some new Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color backlight kits here these ones have the dual touch sensor for palette control and brightness. I have one for Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color. Um, and I have one more of the IPS Game Boy Color backlight kits. Uh, these, all four of these kits were sent to me by Retro Game Repair Shop, so I wanna, I wanna give them another shout out and uh, thank them again for sending me this stuff. They do, they do send me free stuff um, and I appreciate that. They do, I guess, sponsor my channel, um, help me take care of content. They don't pay for my opinion. They don't pay for my videos. They don't, um, they, they just send me stuff and 
quite often I make a video on it. They sent me that IPS Game Boy Color kit. At this point, I feel like it was at least two or three weeks ago, and I haven't gotten to it yet, and I do feel bad about that, so if you're watching this video this far, sorry, Jack, but um, I haven't had time. It just hasn't come up. I'll, I'll get to it eventually, probably, hopefully. Um, see if we can't address some of the issues that I had with my original kit. Um, but, yeah, some real cool stuff coming. Um, I've been speaking with retro modding about a few things, uh, namely battery stuff and shell stuff, so we're going to have some more of that, that kind of content coming up. And I have um, another Game Boy Micro battery mod in the works. Uh, so we can discuss some of the cool stuff, uh, you know, see if we can't get, see if we can't maximize the battery life on a, uh, on a Game Boy Micro. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm done rambling at this point. I gotta go to bed, gotta cue this video for upload. Pretty tired. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Keep being awesome. And before I leave, please check out the description. Maybe not for this video, but for my other videos, I always put, I always try and put cool links um, up to other relevant stuff or um, to the data I've gathered in that video or, uh, you know, other relevant videos of mine or that other people have made or, or um, forum threads with interesting stuff. I always try and do that with all my videos, but with a video like this, I guess there's probably not a lot I'm going to put in there, but I say that, and then when I upload the video, I'll probably write like two pages of junk. But anyway, check it out. Have a good night. Be kind to each other.